everyone, welcome to Play Hooky with me. My name is Roz, and today I want to share with you a simple and fun boho steering wheel cover in crochet. This video is broken into two parts. First, everything you need to know to make this cover, as well as a guide on how to measure and design your own cover, depending on what motif you want to use. You do not need to use this pattern to make your steering wheel cover. I'll give you all the information you need to design your own. And then in part two, I will share step-by-step -step how to make this particular granny square. Along the way, I'll be sharing tips and tricks that I'll be sure to highlight in the chapters below on the progress line, as well as in the description box. Also, all the information regarding the yarn and the hook that I used in this video is in the description box below as well. Okay, I think that's about it, so let's play some hooky. Okay, step one, we need to measure the circumference of our steering wheel. If you have a soft measuring tape like this one, just go ahead and wrap it around the edge of your steering wheel and take that measurement. Mine is 46 inches. Once you have that measurement, the key point here to remember is when you're making your steering wheel cover, you're going to make your cover shorter in length than the measurement of your wheel. For example, mine was 46 inches around and then my cover itself is only 40 inches long. And it took me nine squares to reach that 40 inch length. This is going to take some trial and error. I literally sat in there with nine squares joined and then 10 squares joined to see what fit better. And it was definitely less was better. I'm going to add all of these numbers in the description box below with this guide again. I know sometimes as you're listening, it's a lot to take in. So hopefully the written guide below should help as well. Once you've made your cover, it's time to put it on your steering wheel to test it out. When I did my first test drive with this, I did not have it attached to the steering wheel, but it was tight enough on there where it didn't shift from side to side. And this is really important. You want it to fit snugly, safety first, but I did find that it wanted to shift from front to back. So I attached it to the wheel in about eight different places and that took care of it completely. No shifting whatsoever. And this is really easy to do. Just grab about eight pieces of yarn and thread it through the spaces on your squares. I tied these with double knots and then threaded the ends towards the back and then snipped. Okay, to get started on round one, we're going to do a multiple of 12 here. We're going to be doing 12 double crochets. You can either start with a magic circle like I'm doing here for a tighter center, or you can chain five with a slip stitch. Either way, go ahead and chain three for your first double crochet. I'm going to count this joint as my first chain, so I'm going to do two more to make my three. Okay, and now I'm going to do 11 more double crochets to make a total of 12. Okay, once you have your 12, tighten your center and then secure with a slip stitch in the top of your chain three. Okay, we fastened off and we're ready for round two. For round two, we're going to be making popcorn stitches to make our petals. We're going to make them with three double crochets in each stitch around. So when you're finished with this, you're going to have 12 petals. Fasten on however you like best. Go into the top of the stitch. I'm doing a standing single crochet to start. For this very first one, you want to chain three in total to serve as your first double crochet. Okay, for our popcorn stitches, we're going to be doing three double crochets. So two more in that same stitch. One and two. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be joining the first double crochet with the last double crochet. So in the top of this first chain, enter your hook then go back to that original loop that you just left, pull it through to join. And that is your popcorn stitch. Once you've made your popcorn stitch, chain two, one, two, 
And now we're going to repeat this all the way around. So in the next stitch, make three double crochets. One, two, three. Make that loop a little bit bigger. Going into the top of that first double crochet, going into both of those loops, go through, go back and grab that loop, pull it through the top of that first double crochet, and that is your second popcorn. Chain two, and continue all the way around. Okay, that was my very last petal there. So chain two to finish. Make sure that you have 12 in total before you fasten off. And then I just go into the top of that first join there and fasten off with a slip stitch. And just a quick note, if you wanted your petals to be a little bit thicker or bigger, you could always go up to four or even five double crochets per spot and then do the same thing. It really depends on how puffy you want your petals to be. For round three, we're going to be doing a typical granny style cluster around the sides here, but on the corners, I am going to do it slightly differently and this is completely optional. And I'll talk about that when we get there. But for now, we're going to start with a side. We're going to fasten on as normal and then chain three. That's going to serve as your first double crochet. Now we're going to do two more doubles to complete our first side. And now we're doing this again in the next chain two space. Three double crochets. We're going to have two clusters on the sides. Once you have your two sets of clusters here, now we're ready for a corner. I'm going to do double crochets again, but I'm going to do three together, chain two, and then three together. If you don't want to do that, you don't have to. You can do three double crochets, chain two or three in the center, and then three more double crochets. To do three together, it's very easy. Yarn over, go into your space, yarn over, pull through two, Okay, do not finish your double crochet, just yarn over as if you're starting over. Go back into that place, pull through, yarn over and pull through two. You have three loops on your hook. Do this one more time, yarn over, go into the space, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. You have four loops on your hook. Now you've done three double crochets and we're going to join them together. Yarn over, pull through all four loops, chain three, one, two, three, and now repeat. Yarn over, go in, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. You have two loops on your hook. Yarn over, go in, yarn over, pull through, Yarn over, pull through two. You have three loops on your hook. Yarn over, go in. Yarn over, pull it through. Yarn over, pull through two. You have four loops on your hook and your three double crochets. You're going to yarn over, pull through all four loops to connect it. And you've just done your double crochets three together. Okay, so that's your corner done. And we're going to go straight into that next space with three double crochets. Two and three. Okay, another cluster in the next space here. Remember, we're doing two groups on the sides. Now you're going to do one more corner. And now you're ready to continue on all the way around. Okay, I've reached the end here and then I'm just going to do a slip stitch into the top of that first chain three, one, two, three. 
slip stitch, and then fasten off. We're getting ready to work round four now, and if you are doing the steering wheel cover, I'm going to be doing a joint as you go technique. If you do not like doing joint as you go, I'll add a little card here to show you different ways that you can join this and you don't have to do this technique. But if you are doing the joint as you go, you want to finish one square completely to get started. I'm going to start here on a side and I'm going to be working with half double crochets. So fasten on in the side however you like best and chain two. Now I'm going to do two more in the side, two half double crochets, one and two. This round is super easy. We're just going to be doing half double crochets in all of the spaces. And then when we reach our corner, we're going to do three half doubles, chain two, and three half doubles. So here on the side again, three halves. Okay, I'm at my corner, three half doubles. chain two. I chose chain two because I wanted my corners to be a little bit tighter and this gave a much straighter square when I was finished. Okay, three half doubles. Okay, and just continue this all the way around. Okay, and then once you've reached the end, go ahead and just do a slip stitch into the top of that first half double that you made and go ahead and fasten off. Okay, to join these as you go, it's super easy. We're just going to put this one to the side. Go ahead and create another square working the first three rounds and then we're going to start the join as you go with round four. So create a slip knot on your hook or fasten on however you like best. So starting on a side, I'm going to create my three half doubles. One, two, chain two for that first half double, and then three half doubles. We're going to work from this side to this side, just doing the regular round four technique, and then I'll meet you here. Okay, I've worked this first half side and now I'm getting ready to do the joint as you go. So I'm going to finish this half double before we reach the corner. One. The join as you go technique is super simple. We're basically just going to keep doing what we've been doing, but the two chains in the middle on our corners, we're going to use one of those to attach to the other square here. So I'm going to do my first three. One two, three. Okay, I'm going to chain one. Okay, now with that second chain, instead of doing a chain, I'm going to slip stitch into the corner of that first square we made. I just go into the top and then yarn over from behind and pull it through. Now I'm going to finish my corner as normal. Three half doubles. So you should have something that looks like this. Now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be slip stitching into all of these spaces as we go along. And we're just going to be completing our three half doubles as normal. So before you do your next half double cluster, go in and slip stitch to that square above. Then do your three halves. Okay attach between the spaces of these clusters with your slip stitch. Then continue on with your half doubles. One, two, three. Slip stitch. And now we've reached our corner again. So what we're going to do is we're going to do half of our corner. 
So that's three half doubles. One, two, three. We have two chains in between, right? So we're going to do one of our chains. And then the second chain that we would have done, we're going to instead use it to slip stitch to that top square. And then finish our corner. So that's three more halves in that same space. Okay, and then we're back to a side. And just fasten off as normal in the top of that first chain two. Okay, we're reaching the finish line for this. Let's pretend that you've done all of your panels and you're working on your very final panel here. So when you've reached your very last panel, do not finish it, just work half of it and go ahead and join. And then what you're going to do is you're going to join the other side to the very beginning square that you created. So essentially you're doing an infinity scarf for your car. So I'm at my last half double before the corner. Just do that as normal. Go ahead and do half of my corner. You're doing the exact same process as, you, as you've been doing all the way around. Chain one, okay, and then just bring in your first square and go ahead and join as normal. And then work your half, other half of your corner I mean. and then join, okay? And you're just gonna continue on with the same process. You're now just joining both ends together. We're at our corner. We're just doing our three half doubles. Chain one, join. There we go, and Continue on with the rest of that corner. Then just fasten off with a slip stitch and your cover is complete. Now I would recommend that you don't fasten off here. I would go and just go measure this and make sure that it is fitting your wheel the way you want it to. I had to do this. I actually started with 10 squares and found that it was too big. So I had to pull this all apart and then reduce one square. And that's how I realized that I only needed nine. So it does take a little bit of trial and error just to be double sure. 